Hello, my name is Kishwani. It's K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the HESI. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the HESI Admission Assessment Exam Review, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase it immediately. You're going to need it. Right now, we are in the process of solving problems having to do with the notion of subtraction of fractions. And we are on page number 17. Please turn to it. Page number 17 and today is our lesson number 22. In the event that after watching these videos on addition and subtraction of fractions, you feel that you need more help, you want to have some more problems to practice on, there are two videos that you can watch. One is T's Day 4. The math on the T's, as we have discussed before, is very similar to what you will find on HESI. They are very similar. There are 80 videos on, 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 on T's at my channel. Day number 4 is what you want to watch. In addition to that, in addition to that, there is a series called Basic Math right here. Day number 49 is what you want to watch if you need more practice, if you feel that you need more practice on these type of problems. Let's get going. The very first problem that we see is a very simple one, very straightforward one. There is nothing to it on page number 17. We are given 7 ninth minus 4 ninth. Well, the reason why it's very simple and very straightforward is because we don't have to do anything at all to find the common denominator because they have common denominator as it is. They have a denominator that is common to both. It's 9 in both places. So since they have a common denominator, all we have to do is subtract the numerator, subtract the top part, 7 minus 4 is 3, so we end up with 3 over 9, and then at the end, all we have to do is make sure that it is in its reduced form, the final answer has to be in the most reduced form, and if it is not, we need to reduce it. 3 over 9 can be reduced. 3 and 9 have a common factor of 3, let's divide top and bottom by 3. We divide top by 3, we get a 1, we divide the bottom by 3, we get a 3, therefore the final answer is 1 third final answer is one-third. Let's do one more. We are on page number 18 now. Page 18. We are given, this is example number 2. In the book they do not number these things as 2, 3 and 4, but you can see that I'm, I'm numbering them here as 1, 2, 3. There are three of them here, 1, 2 and 3. So it's the second one which says 5 minus 12 5 minus 12, 5 over 12 rather, minus 1 8, minus 1 8. Here we do not have a common denominator. The first fraction has a denominator of 12, the second one has a denominator of 8. They are not similar, they are not same. We need to make the denominator the same. In order for us to have the same denominator, we have to first figure out what is the least common uh, uh, multiplier here least common, the smallest number that we can find, the smallest number that you can find that happens to be both a multiple of 12 and a multiple of 8. And the easiest, quickest, simplest way to find out the least common multiplier is to do what we're going to do here. Although in this scenario it's not necessary because it's, the numbers are too small, numbers are too simple, but I want you to learn the method in the event that you end up with a little bit more complicated stuff. So here we have 12 we put down the 12 here, here we have 8, we put down the 8 here, and we started dividing, we started looking for the common factor, the least smallest prime number that we can find, the smallest prime number that we can find that we can divide 12 and 8 by, and that smallest prime number is 2. If we divide 12 by 2 we get 6, we get, divide 8 by 2 we get a 4, and then 6 and 4 again can be divided by 2 one more time, so we divide one more time by 2, and 6 becomes 3, and 2 becomes, uh, 4 becomes 2. Now 3 and 2, they have nothing in common. The process stops there. 3 is a prime number, 12, 2 is a prime number, it stops there. And there you go, there is your, there is your smallest common multiplier. 2 times 2 times 3 times 2. 2 times 2 times 3 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 3 is 12, 12 times 2 is 24. 24 is what we need as a common denominator. We have to make the common denominator 24. 24 is the smallest common multiplier 
It doesn't have to be 24. We could have used 48 as a common denominator. We could have used 48 million for, for, for a common denominator. If you wanted, you could have used 48 trillion as a common denominator. But the bigger the numbers, the more work you'll end up doing. Therefore, we look for the smallest one because there, that's where we do the least amount of work. That magic number here happens to be 24. So we have to make this one into a denominator of 24. We have a 12 here. How can we convert 12 into a 24? I multiply it by 2. Well, if you can multiply the bottom by 2, you have to multiply top by 2 to make sure that the value of the 5 over 12 does not change. 5 over 12 is still 5 over 12 because 2 over 2 is just 1. So there is your first, there is your first fraction. How can we convert 8 into a 24? We have 24 here, 2 times 2 times 3 times 2, that's 24. If you convert 8 into a 24, how do we do that? Well, multiply it by 3. If you're going to multiply 8 by 3, you must multiply the top by 3. And again, it is still, it is still 1 8. One, 1 8 that was given to us is still 1 8 because we are multiplying it simply, we are simply multiplying it by 3 over 3, which is 1. And multiplying something by 1 doesn't change its value. So here we have 8 times 3 which is 24, here we have 2 times 12 which is 24, they have the common denominator of 24, so here we have 2 times 5 which is 10 over 24 minus 1 times 3 which is 3 over 24 and 10 minus 3 is going to be 7 over 24. And since 7 and 24, since 7 and 24 have nothing in common, the story ends here. The answer is 7 over, 12, 7 over 24. 7 over 24. Let's do one more. Number 3. Example number 3. It says 5 and 2 third minus 3 and 4 fifth. 3 and Four fifths. Let's see what we can do, shall we? We could simply subtract three from the five and be done with it. The answer would be two. Three minus five minus three is two. But then we have to subtract. We have a two third here. We have a two third here minus a four fifth. As we can see, as we can see, two third, two third is less than four fifth. We cannot subtract a forfeit from a two-third, so we're going to have to do some juggling. We're going to have to do some borrowing. We're going to have to do some manipulation. Here's how it goes. Here's how it goes. So we do not, we do not, we're not going to subtract three from the five. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to write our five as four plus one. Four plus one is still five. So there is your five, and then we have a two-third. That's the first quantity. Are you with me so far? 4 plus 1 is 5, and then 5 plus 2 thirds is 5 and 2 thirds. That's the first quantity right there. Now that one that you see there in the middle, this one that you see in the middle, we're going to rewrite it in a different form. 4, four just remains 4, and 1 we're going to write that as 3 over 3. 3 over 3 is 1, plus 2 thirds. Are you still with me? Now we have 3 thirds and a 2 thirds, that's 5 thirds. So it becomes 4 and 5 thirds. And now, 5 third is in fact more than 4 fifths. So now we can, now we can subtract 4 fifths from a 5 third. So here, instead of 5 and 2 third, it ends up becoming 4 and 5 third. It becomes 4 and 5 third. That's what we're going to write here. It becomes 4 and 5 third. And this is the reason behind it. We had a 5, 5 is 7, 4 plus 1, 4 plus 1 plus 2 third. And then 1 can be written as 3 over 3, and then 3 thirds plus a 2 thirds is 5 thirds, it becomes 4 and 5 thirds. So we replace our original quantity with 4 and 5 thirds, and now we can begin the process. So that part is done. We need the room, so we have to raise it now. And now what we're going to do is, so 4 minus 3 is the easy part. 4 minus 3 is 1. We're going to keep it in abeyance. We're going to keep it aside. We're not going to worry about it. We're going to keep it in abeyance. Right now we're going to concentrate on subtracting the fractions. So we have 5 third, we have 5 third minus a 4 third, a 4 fifth. Let's do it very quickly. We need to have a common denominator. How can we find common denominator? 3 and 5, 3 and 5 have nothing in common. They have nothing in common. Therefore, the easiest, simplest, quickest, the most economical way to make the denominator the same is to simply introduce a 3 here by multiplying top and bottom by 3. 
and introduce a 5 here at the bottom by multiplying top and bottom by 5. Voila, it's all done. It's all done. Now we have a common denominator 5 times 3, 5 times 3. On the top we end up with 5 times 5 which is 25 over 15 minus 12 over 15. Now they have the same denominator, we simply subtract the top, 25 minus 12 is 13 over 15. 13 over 15 have nothing in common, 13 and 15 have nothing, no factors in common, so the story ends. It just stays as 13 over 15. In other words, in other words, 5 thirds, 5 thirds minus 4 fifth equals 13 over 15. And how much does how much does 4 minus 3 equal? 4 minus 3 simply equals 1. 4 minus 3 is simply equals 1. And we know that 5 third minus a 4 fifth is 3 15, uh, 13 15. So 4 minus 1, 4 minus 3 is 1, so it becomes 1 and 13 15. There is the final answer. That's it, we are done. What does it mean to keep something in abeyance? We have learned this word many a times. To keep something in abeyance is to put it aside. We'll deal with it later. We'll deal with it later. That's what it means. I forget now which day we learned. We learned this word. We learned the word abeyance in our vocabulary lessons. But I don't have the car, uh, my, in my index uh, uh, cards uh, for the vocabulary. So I cannot tell you which day we learned it. But it's right there in the vocabulary words lessons. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay? Bye now.